every single if time. If today is any indication, <laughs> she never makes a mistake with her predictions. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. And she likes all decks and all uh, cards <laughs> that you can play in Shadowverse. <laughs> all right. So it looks like Swordcraft did not net the ban. Havencraft did. So I feel like this is a slight misstep from Shadow Shit. However, if he can get through the sword deck, it's not going to matter too much. So we'll see how he does. We've seen this matchup a few times, and it seems very difficult for, for Forestcraft to push through. It, it has seemed impossible, as a matter of fact. Uh, once we get to turns five and six, it really separates when you're talking about cards like Frontline Cavalier, like Envy mentioned, White Paladin. When you have when you add the Mars value to the board, you know what I mean. Like it just gets so hard to overwhelm the Swordcraft opponent, it, and the Iperius feel dead in this matchup. Mm. Really hard to get any advantage out of. It's interesting too because you would think, at least without the Mars alongside of it, the one defense tokens that are being thrown out there on the side of Swordcraft just get chewed up by Wood of Brambles and Elfshild Maze and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it just it never seems to play out that way, you know. Yep, and I really like the playing of the Bladed Hedgehog this turn. Literally playing around everything the Forcecraft deck can do to remove that follower. So basically just doing what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Swordcraft making those value plays with their followers early and often. Yep. A 1-3 on turn three. 2 is very, very awkward to deal with. Yep. Urius being the prime one against yeah. Forcecraft, that, that actually just blows it out of the water. But it looks like, the, okay, so this is the hand that we've always talked about where it's like, yeah, this looks pretty bad. But these are the winning hands that we've seen from Forestcraft. So if he can start drawing some bounce spells, he might be able to get enough damage in early uh, to kind of push through here. Yeah. And I think it's important to identify this. Uh, no ward in sight here for uh, Repi, which I think is going to be big. This Geno can come down and continue the effect to affect the board. And making sure that the Insect Lord does not stay. I think that's that's very smart. Yeah. Got to get rid of that card. Okay. So there's a lot of damage from hand. And he's going to be fairly protected by this uh, Wood of Brambles. Unfortunately, I think he has to either ignore this Geno or run the Goblin in. And still do no damage to Repi at this moment. Yeah. And really, as you get into these 5, 6, 7 turns, that's when... The big cards start coming out from Swordcraft, right? Where you're flooding the board with Ward. You're getting these big, beefy followers. And even, I think, in Repi's deck, there is the potential for kind of an Odahime turn, you know? Yeah. Odahime could be huge. <laughs> yeah. Odahime is, like, this really awkward card that, like, when it's good, it's the best card you could possibly play in the yeah. game. But when it's bad, it's it literally does nothing. You know what I mean? It's It's one of those very polarizing cards. Oh, double Albert, too. Now, the aggressive game plan is not really something that's that Repi has set himself on. You know, we're in mm -hmm. turn 4-5, and, and your opponent's still at 20 defense, 20 health. And uh, that's not really something that you want to play a Storm card into and evolve. But, I mean, maybe he just starts now. I guess I could see that. I think I think he just plays defensively. So the way you beat Agro Forestcraft, and uh, basic, definitely not akin to combo Forestcraft, the way you beat Agro Forestcraft, you just run him out of cards. Mm-hmm. Basically, in this matchup, the mid-sword deck is the control deck. So as long as it has the last card on the table, that's all it really cares about. Because mm. you got to think about how this forest craft deals damage. After they have no roaches, after the fairy drivers have no advantage, the Iperias are gone. You know, I mean, there's, no, there's not really much they can do. Yeah, Shadow should have put into a bad spot where, again, he has to give away followers on board to just clear out the other side. Yeah, he's playing very defensively. Which I, again is is not something I believe you can do with the uh, with the Agro Forest deck. I don't think you can actually go into the later turns, and we've seen this time after time after time. When the Agro Forest Craft deck isn't winning by turn five or turn six, it really doesn't have any late game push. It doesn't have a way to just win the game. And like the only other option you have is to play out your fairy and then do a Roach Evolve thing. Yeah. But because you haven't gotten damage prior to these turns, it just it feels like you're you're starting too little too late. Yeah, it's because there are there there are no card draw options in the Agro Forest Craft deck. They're not playing any of them. You know what I mean? Like we don't see anything in here that just nets you card advantage other than fairy generators. This is probably gonna go face. It's yep. the only real way I can see. Gotta start doing something. And he just passes the turn, wants to keep his resources, but I think that's just gonna give more time for the bigger options that Swordcraft has to come in and take effect. Yep, and I, I believe that was a frontline cavalier that was just drawn. Uh-huh. 
which is exactly what you need, especially alongside some other play that you can do this turn. And there are definitely other plays to be done this turn. Yep. And look at this healing. Oh. Everybody's eating today. <laughs> and this can run right into the 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Left with a very, very nice board. And homebound mercenary. Oh, God. Goes all the way back up to 19. No board on the side of the forest craft here. This is what we were talking about, guys. When you, when you play these matchups and you don't fully understand what the best decks against you are, and we, in this case, all identified Swordcraft as being the, the deck you need to ban out. You don't ban it out. Look what happens. You just you just kind of stall out against it. This can't feel good. Yep. Oh, boy. Going to have to run the Water Fairy into the front line and then the Fairy itself probably into the 2-2. Two -two. Mm-hmm. And at this point, again, if you make an aggressive deck play the reactive game plan, you've already won the game. The second they start doing it, you've already won. All these resources dumped into not pushing Repi lower and lower. We actually might get get to see Walfred this oh, game. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Walfred. <laughs> Walfred. My life for a Walfred play. <sighs> here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, boy. The roaches have to be used for removal. Yep, Evolve It, that's going to make it even more difficult. Yep. And again, guys, just thinking about this simple stuff, right? If you can evolve something, get more than one attack out of it, great stuff. Yep, the Aperia, like you mentioned, not a very useful card in this matchup. The two damage and a three damage Roach. So that means the Albert and the Bladed Hedgehog can go down here. Yep. And you can see Shadow Shadet doing the math in his hand. If I draw X, how much damage can I deal? 19 is definitely not that number. <laughs> I think what he's thinking yeah. about, how much damage can I actually take next turn, play the Iperia pass, and hope. Yeah, but the Walford is going to come down. Yeah, Walford's going to come down. We're going to see the Mustachio. G, G. Yes. We don't often get to see this. This is going to be massive. Walford. What is his voice line? Let's listen. May the White Wings save you. Oh, my God. And in the damage fact, on they will. Oh, my. Unbelievable stat yeah. line now. This is an impossible board state. <laughs> yeah. Shadow Shut Shadet knows. Walfred, when it, when it actually gets played, is pretty cool. If it gets more than one follower with its effect, I feel like you just close out pretty much any grindy game. Mm -hmm. Unless you're playing against some control deck, which that'll never happen anyway, because yeah. you're not going to have followers and play to actually Walford. But if you're playing this mid-rangey grindy matchup or versus an aggro deck, you play that Walford down, get two wards that just get pumped, like, get out of here. Yeah. Game over. If there's anything we've learned about Shadowverse over the, over the expansions, it's that things that buff up the defense value yes. end up becoming very, very crazy. Aether of the White Wing on yep. top of Cleric Lancer, Heavenly Knight. Like, it's just really good stuff. Even things like Alice, Actress Faria. That's right. So now Absolutely. we get the replay of a Combo Force first and Aggro Force deck. So mm. far, we've seen the Combo Force decks be pretty good in this matchup. I think, again, it's, it's that whole idea that these tokens, like, it's not being as traditionally successful as it was kind of a while ago, mm -hmm. right? Where the token very kind of aggressive force craft lineups were actually constructing a lot of face damage and, and going face and elf song consistently and it just it felt like there was nothing you could do about the board yeah, prior. it felt unstoppable uh -huh. yeah but now it's just like you get somewhat good boards but they don't seem to be able to swing face as much and they kind of peter out and then you're left trying to play with crumbs absolutely right. And I and I honestly have to favor always the combo forest player in this matchup. The reason I say that is because they do have access to things like Crystallia Aaron and Crystallia Tia that can just put the brakes, kind of like we just saw the Midsword do, do to the aggro forest player. Plus, it can technically win faster. Mm. We're talking about turn six, seven, eight wins, whereas the aggro forest deck has been pushing into the later turns more often than we've seen it end the game fast. Yep. So this is Probably the one scenario where I think actually the token deck is going to run away with it, unless you use the airbound barrage here, which might be a good choice. Wood of Brambles plus one fairy drop is not going to clear the board, and that means the next turn there's a double fairy elf song that's going to come down your way and do a lot of damage. So I think whereas this feels like a very good option, you're conceding a lot of damage here. The only big thing is that there is 
if Shadow Shadet chooses to go face, there is a situation where Reppy by turn six could turn around and get some chip damage and mm -hmm. reach with a huge roach combo, but it's true. And he's almost there. He's got the bounce and a roach. Does have the Aria. We've seen this Aria be drawn more often than not in the combo roach player's hand, which is awesome. Uh, you know, being restricted doesn't matter when you always have one. Yep. This board is going to be enormous here. Again, we just talked about it. Anything that buffs, buffs defense has proven itself to be incredibly strong in Shadowverse. All of a sudden, this Wood of Brambles doesn't give you free trades, meaning that the board can be taken back by Shadow Shadet here, and you have to deal somehow eight points of damage to get rid of this. Yeah, this is tough. This is the best elf song we've seen on the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, a full board, on curve, feels great. Yeah. Even playing something like the Guiding Fairy doesn't feel great because you're still taking six damage here, and you have no idea what's in hand for your mm -hmm. opponent. Up to eight, actually, and with the Ariana already in hand, mm -hmm. whew, a lot of damage. I, I'll tell you, I've I've grown on Ariana. I've actually started putting it in more of my decks, not even just aggressive forest decks, because it just generates a lot of value. It gives you another one-cost card. It's a one-cost card that does a lot. deals three mm -hmm. damage, two to your opponent when you play two other spells that turn. And when you bounce it and you get more value out of it, it just feels like you can do a lot more extra damage than you would have been able to do otherwise. Yeah. It gets that chip damage in that Forest Craft always needs. Yeah. You're done for. All right, evolving. Yeah, this looks like an Airbound Barrage play or an Ancient Elf play. Nice. I like that. And a Roach. I like it a lot. Yep. I think this is absolutely the choice. The thing is, it might feel like you're dumping a lot of resources into this, but if you can even slow down the Agro Forest mm -hmm. deck just a little bit, the chances of stabilizing increase dramatically. Yeah. Again, this is you don't have to play. This is why I really like Combo Roach. It's, it's so versatile. Against this matchup, you can just be, again, the control player. Play out wards, mm -hmm. play out a good mid game, run the Agro Forest Craft player out of cards. Yep. You're not in the clear yet, but this is where you really want to rely on things like Tia, Aaron, mm -hmm. any kind of healing that you have to just keep buying yourself time. The triple Ancient Elf, you can play Bouncy Castles, <laughs> which is pretty good. <laughs> bouncy Castles. Yeah. Perfect. Bouncy Castles is very, very nice. You constantly heal up your Ancient Elves and, you know, have this unending stream of wards um, while keeping options in your hand. Right. Unfortunately, there's nothing to get advantage out of them right now. Mm -hmm. I do think that there is a world where you try to set up another Brambles because that's just going to help continue trade out against these fairies. Interesting. Okay, so this is going to evolve into the 5-2 and then an Ancient Elf play? It's tough. Yeah. It's, it's tough to... If you Ancient Elf... You force at least something yeah. maybe to evolve over it so you're taking less face damage... Looks like he's just going to set up the Wood of Brambles play again. I think this might hurt. I think this was... it. It's it's nice because getting the Wood of Brambles down means that your next turn will be very effective, but I think he needed to do the Ancient Elf to prevent any more face damage. You've got three. There's, you're not going to get util utilization out of all three of those effectively over the course of this game. I feel like putting putting the brick wall in front of Shadow Shadet just for a turn, because he still doesn't have Aaron to come back with. He doesn't yep. have a comeback mechanic just yet. Yeah. And the Liza shuts down the Wood of Brambles. Yep. Also shuts down a top deck Cassiopeia, which is super important. Mm -hmm. You've all for face here. And I think this is just going to seal it. Yep. Going to be very, very tough. The big thing about Ancient Elf is that you can't have two of them out. <laughs> yeah. It is It is actually impossible. So it needs to be kind of evolve here. Oh, wow, okay. Just wants the beefiest ward possible. Mm -hmm. So you evolve the fairy over the 3-3, three, three, and then you expect three followers to pump in. That means one damage to face, so that's what you're hoping for in best possible case scenario. So if Ariana comes down, I think it's lethal, right? Because if you... If you throw one fairy in, you play the Ariana, you Why? can bounce the you can bounce a fairy bomb and then swing in, right? 
Well, I, I feel like even if it's not lethal this turn, with the Airbound Barrage and an Ariana, over the course of two turns, those those yep. spell bombs are just going to take you out anyway. Yep. But I believe there is lethal this turn as well, yes. Yep. There it is. Spell bomb yep. is so good, especially at one cost. Is going to close things out, so combo forest. Couldn't quite find the answers. I think the two big things for me in that game is first, no early game removal. Nope, that, no early game removal. That turn yep. for big elf song turn. And then trying to figure out how to use Ancient Elf. It is it is a very, very awkward card to utilize in kind of the early mid game just because you don't have really enough play points to get it really, really fat. And that throws away your board, right? And so right. it's 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 very awkward to play Ancient Elf in that scenario. This is a different style. So like before when Ancient Elf was at its peak was when you were playing goblins and water fairies and elf child maze and everything that you could do to just pump out before you played the the Ancient Elf. Now people are playing, you know, strict tutor for their rhinoceroses and they're mm -hmm. getting rid of a lot of those one drops. And they're playing Wood of Brambles as like their only early game or Fire Spike Grove to add some to that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It makes Ancient Elf not as good. So I think even as a three of it's probably a little too high. Mm -hmm. But we've seen we've seen it be okay. Not great. And we've been talking about that for weeks, yeah. Ancient Elf. It's been just okay. On the play, Vengeance Blood with two one drops and two Emeraldos. The Emeraldos are a little bit concerning because the the big thing is you don't really want to put yourself in Vengeance and removing a card on board is not that effective against Combo Forest. I do want to mention Arya drawn yet again. Yeah. <laughs> Every yep. time. And again, we know traditionally this matchup, oh, the Cassiopeia too, to swing on six. Mm -hmm. This matchup has traditionally been in favor of Roach Forest just because you do half the job for them. That's right. So essentially, you're getting yourself down to 10. Forest combos can deal 10 pretty easily, mm -hmm. especially with Arya. Yep. Having it that in hand, I think that's a that's an of course choice. Ooh, did not quite hit the thing that you wanted. Nope. There's only there's only one really good choice there, so Yep. I think you just goblin mage here. Yep. I don't see any reason not to. I mean you could save one damage to your face, but I think developing yep. the two two is a little bit better here. Yep. You just kinda have to take the damage now and, and try to ride it out, I feel like, is the best way to approach this. Right. Plus getting roaches into your hand against the Vengeance Blood deck, very good. Gosh, that Hungry Horde. You can play that plus the Blood Wolf. This is basically as aggressive as it gets for Shadow Shadow. I think back-to-back -back yeah. he's drawn cards that have been very effective. These Ambling Wraiths have gotten, what, like four damage each now? Three to four. Protected by the Spiderweb Imp. Spiderweb Imp, by the way, is the actual best card in Bloodcraft besides Urius against Forestcraft. Mm. It is so hard to push through. Oh, yeah. man. Like, you have to have an Airbound Barrage early in order to just to deal with it. I'm trying to think. And I, I think you absolutely remove the Goblin Mage. Oh, 100%. 100%. This is, this is the best way to keep most of your things alive because <gasps> what are you expecting? You're expecting an Aria. You're Needs expecting to close an Elf this Princess out by turn six. Yeah. Needs to because there are insane cards in hand for Repi. If turn five can't close things out, I think it becomes very difficult. Your hand is filled though, so you're gonna you're living off of these cards in hand, right? The Sylvan Justice is going to be useful. Okay, he does not want to mill. Mm -hmm. I don't think he needs to in this situation. Oh my goodness. This Gosh. is good stuff. One, but two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So you've you got to think three. about combo if you're Repi, right? Yeah. You know that there's one Wisp. Hmm? You're not sure. You know that there's at least one Roach in hand. So in an optimal scenario, you play three spells before Roach. That's four damage. Plus an Evo is six. So there's not eight damage left in play. So you know there's not. Well, that's only counting one Roach. If we count yeah. two Roaches... Then we're talking about one, two spells, and then two roaches, and that's three, four. It's the same thing. Yeah. So I think you just go all out aggressive here. Just evolve, go face. Evolve, evolve probably the Blood Wolf. Maybe one of the Ambling Wraiths. Just because Blood Wolf gets protected against that Wisp attack. Zero, one, two, Three, four. I think you can play five cards before you play the Roach. Five cards? Six damage, yeah. If you play your Wisp, bounce the Wisp, play the Wisp, 
play the fairy, play the Sylvan Justice. Oh, right. I didn't count. I didn't count bouncing the Wisp. That's right. So getting rid of the Wisp, we saw that being a very effective yeah. strategy last time that did not get employed. Yeah. This game, uh, Shadow Shadet's like, yeah, none of that shenanigans. <laughs> All right. 14 damage here on turn five, I think, is a little bit tough. Yeah. There's just not a good option here. I love it. I love now hearing you do the Roach math. We need to do Unlimited more weeks. I want to get Rainy thinking. This is good stuff. Yeah. Roach math is not good for a person. <laughs> that Unhealthy. Has less than an existing brain. <laughs> nah. I'd say you're smarter than the average bear. Well, that's good because I'm not a bear. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing to hear. That's a good thing. So, so yeah, this is this is tough. I don't even know what you do in this situation. You have to remove most of this board. I think the best option here is Sylvan Justice with an Ancient Elf and clear as much as you possibly can. Yeah. We know that'll can. protect him. Yeah. You don't have enough play points to play the Sylvan Justice and the and the Roach, mm -hmm. actually. So, <laughs> so I, I think, yeah. I think you run the 5-4 into the Blood Wolf, you Sylvan Justice the 2-1, and you evolve the Ancient Elf over a 1-1. One, one. And I think that's that probably your best choice, yeah. It gives you the best defense, and, and then you, you still, still have Roach. And you still maintain a combo, yeah. yeah. You still have Roach combo with a Wisp in hand. And you have another turn worth of play points, so actually you're not necessarily losing damage, and based on what you can draw, you can actually draw yourself into the win. <gasps> what are you doing? Yeah, why playing the Wisp here? Oh, okay. Have to bounce it. Okay, yeah, this, yep. this makes sense. We keep I keep forgetting that you can just play the Wisp for free. Yeah. This is a free card. Yeah. This card, Wisp are so good. It's yeah. So good. Every time. Oh, okay. I don't know if that actually makes a difference. Did he not attack a 1-1 one, one He did not attack a 1-1, one, one, but I think it's okay. Why not attack the 1-1? One, one? Uh, yeah, it doesn't make a difference, actually. Yeah. It's interesting. I guess this is kind of a bluff play, uh, meaning... Is it over? I think he, he can't remove the Ancient Elf. I think Shadow Shadet just lost. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, what I think is cool... Okay, so one thing that I can say is really cool about that Evolve No oh! Attack... Oh! Nope, that's not going to oh, help. Oh, wow. That's not... Wait, how yeah, many, how many times does out. a follower come in? One, two, three, four times. Oh, he's one off! We saw that before, where Arius is one off from stopping Wait, lethal. No, no, no! He can't play the Roach. Wisp, bounce, Wisp, Wisp bounce, Wisp, Fairy, Fairy, Roach. Yeah. He can't actually kill it with the combo. He needs to cut one Roach out. But I don't think. But he, he can. But he can do fourteen with 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 just the combo. Is the question? Can he do that? I I think he could definitely get lethal. I think you should probably just dance of death the Arius, honestly. <laughs> just dance past. I think that's or way play too the risky. Aaron. That's way too risky. Aaron could have been an option, but I think he's, he's going go for the for win it. if he's playing it this way, yeah. right? Three, five, ten. That's this is one damage off, I believe. No, it's no, not. No, 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 no. no, no. no. He's, he's, he's got it. Roach, yeah. He's got it. He's got yep. it. Oh my god! Just get that Urius. That actually, that <laughs> Urius is scary as heck. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is crazy. All I've got to say is Wisp is insane, okay? Yep. Stop drawing Arias, all of you combo. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Don't. You know, because Forcecraft deserves its time in the sun. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of fading in rotation yeah. a little bit. Wow. Yeah. I, I, can't e I can't even say enough about I, that Wisp. I like the the play that Repi constructed there. Yeah. Understood that the Urius was down. Still looked for the win. Yeah. And found it and executed it. It was great. Wisp! Fairy what's what's going on with yeah. that girl?